Is Antonio Brown truly losing his mind? And let's take a look at the week one schedule for Sunday and Monday night. Let's go. I'm so happy that there's actually football news and football to talk about because I'm sick and tired of talking about the trash bag Philadelphia Phillies. What is going on, everyone? This Antonio Brown drama is ridiculous. It really is. I don't know what's going on with this guy. You claim you want to be a team guy. It's all about winning. Well, this is the complete opposite. You're a team cancer right now, and I don't know what's going on in his brain. There are some football fans that actually believe that he is CTE due to some hits in the past, and that's really messing with the way that he's approaching this. I don't think that's the truth, though. I believe that this is who he is. This is the nature of the beast. This is the personality of Antonio Brown. He is a big-time diva. Let's not act like he's the first one to do this. We had T.O. doing bench presses in, in his driveway when there was a bunch of media people there. That's the nature of this position when you have a diva. And he's the next one. Before we dive heavily into this video, use the promo code BROAD for a free $20 at SeatGeek's checkout. 20 bucks off your tickets? It's a no-brainer. Let's, let's talk about Antonio Brown, because he has the foot incident, right? Then he has the helmet issue, where he was missing practice due to it, and he was being annoying about it, being a pest. He gets fined for missing practices, he puts it up on social media, and then allegedly he's screaming at Mike Mayock saying he's going to punch him in the face. That's right, the general manager. Dude! If you're really all about winning and wanting to be on a team that's successful, you're hurting that. How does he not see that? And if the if the Raiders elect to suspend him, there's ways to get out of the guaranteed contract. It's going to get really interesting here, and it has to be done by Sunday, I believe, because they play on Monday night, so it has to be done before week one gets going here. So I'm sure there's going to be some sort of news real soon. The problem is, I don't think the Raiders want to give up. And I don't think they should, yet. But at the same time, they're trying to build a culture. Mike Mayock is not messing around. Alright, he's not going to be a pushover because you're a star. He has that Philadelphia in him. <laughs> he does. He's got to play hardball. You really actually see them playing good cop, bad cop. John Gruden's the good cop. Mike Mayock's the bad cop. Let's see how it all plays out. AB's trying to walk all over everyone, and they're not having it. And I like the fact that they're standing their ground. You knew that there was going to be some sort of package with AB, but did you think it was going to be to this extreme? No, you, you really don't. You just don't. This is to a way bigger degree than you thought it would be. But does that mean that the Pittsburgh Steelers and Mike Tomlin did such a great job at actually keeping it in-house? Is Mike Tomlin having his feet up right now, cracking up, saying, Oh, did I tell you so? You never heard it to this degree. At the end, when he when he skipped out and he was missing time with the Steelers, yeah, then you did. But over the last few years with the Steelers, you didn't hear the same noise that you're hearing in Oakland. Keep in mind, Mike Mayock is a new GM. John Gruden is, I wouldn't say new to coaching, but he's just getting his feet back into the water. He's handling it a little bit better than Mike Mayock is, but... You know, that's the scheme they're going with. Good cop, bad cop. But I look at what he's done all around in Pittsburgh, and maybe you praised Mike Tomlin for how he held it inside the locker room, inside the management. Because this is a mess. This is a dumpster fire. If he does end up getting cut from the Raiders and moving on, if you're another organization, are you really going to take a chance on him? No, watch. We all make the jokes, but it's going to be the Patriots, and then there they go, winning another Super Bowl again, because that's just how it goes. But if I'm an organization, I don't want to go near this guy. He's a clear problem. I get it. His talent's great. But guess what? When he does things that <laughs> screw up everything, screw up the culture, screw up the teammates, and you have to suspend him, he's not even on the field. I believe the Raiders are going to try and work this out because they made the move for a reason and they know how special he is when he's on his game and he's out there on Sundays, right? And Well, in this week's case, Monday. They're going to try and work it out. But there's going to be a short leash. 
And I just can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Now, I drafted him in fantasy. So here I am. I'm trying to work things out with some of my buddies in the league. I'm thinking about just getting rid of him. Just trading him for an Alshon Jeffrey, a Jarvis Landry. I don't want to deal with it because who knows if he's ever going to play again. But I decided I'm going to keep him on my bench and we'll just wait. We'll just wait and see. I actually had a friend who drafted in, in his draft. This is in my league. Andrew Luck and Antonio Brown. <laughs> oh, tough bounce. The guy's a problem. And he needs to be professional. This is childish. You're in the pros. You got to be there. You have to be involved in your practices. You can't be about me, me, me. No. No. If you truly want to win a title, if you want to be a contender, you need to play the part. You're the leader. You can argue that Antonio Brown is a bigger piece than Derek Carr is when it comes to internally. Like, he's the biggest leader on the team. You can argue that. Well, how do you expect the team to have good vibes when you're threatening to punch your GM in the face? Now let's dive into the schedule for week one for this Sunday and Monday. Some interesting matchups. I'm so pumped. I mean, I, I saw the the Eagles hype video that they put up on Twitter and I had goosebumps. I had tears. Literally, I had tears falling from my eyes. That's how super stoked I was to watch it. And we obviously have in the one o'clock hour the Eagles hosting the Redskins. We will get more into that, of course, in, in another video. But some games that still Stood out to me when I saw the release here. Jacksonville at home against the Chiefs. How will Nick Foles do with that squad? And remember, they're playing against a legit super squad and a team that is favored to win the AFC and a good chance to win the Super Bowl. So how will Jacksonville and that defense and Nick Foles, how will they hang against arguably the top squad in the entire league? Le'Veon Bell at home against the Bills. Originally, I saw that match on my left. <laughs> I don't give a damn about those teams. They both suck, and that's the truth. But how is Le'Veon Bell going to play? We haven't seen the guy play football in so long, and you can tell by the way that he seems motivated and determined to get out on the field. He's juiced. Like, he's amped up to go out there and perform. And as an athlete looking at another athlete, I can see how powerful that message is when he's saying he's ready to go and I want to see him go out there and, and try and dominate the, the football game Falcons at Vikings just two good teams you know Matt Ryan Kirk Cousins will Kirk Cousins actually have a good game I mean it's not like it's a primetime game so maybe but just two good teams playing each other the Rams versus Carolina can Carolina Get a good W to start the season. They're at home. Christian McCaffrey. Is Cam Newton going to be able to hold up? We know he had that little foot injury there in preseason. That's an interesting game. Now, Todd Gurley apparently will not be on any sort of touches restrictions, if you will. We saw the injury last year. He is ready to rock and roll. But here's an opportunity for the Panthers to steal a W at home against a really good football team early on. I'm just curious to see how rusty everyone's going to be because the whole preseason argument, September is the new preseason, that's the big conversation being had and I'm totally okay with that. It makes the most sense to me because these games actually matter. There's no reason to put guys in preseason. We've had that discussion so many times. Can the Panthers squeak out a victory against the Rams? Those are the games that really stand out to me. You have the Browns playing at 1 o'clock as well. I wonder how Baker Mayfield, Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, and that offense is going to look. So, of course, I'll be intrigued with that. I'm a red zone guy anyway. I have two TVs. Eagles game on one, red zone on the other. Red zone is muted until the Eagles go on commercial. Then you put the sound on the other TV. But I always have the games on. I need red zone. So this is why I like when the Eagles play at 820. Because I'll get all day red zone, big TV, sound on the entire time. And then bang, just the Eagles I have to pay attention to for the 8 o'clock game. But when it's the 1 o'clock, you have both. And I'm fully engaged on, on both. But Eagles first, priority. And then we switch over to the red zone. Red zone sound. The 4 o'clock window opens up. The biggest game for me would be the Giants and the Cowboys, obviously, because I am an NFC East division guy, if you will. You have the Seahawks playing the Colts and the Chargers. How will Frank Reich 
maneuver the whole Andrew Luck thing. Brissett, how is he going to play? Intriguing to see. You have Cardinals playing the Lions. Kyler Murray, new head coach. What's their offense going to look like? What's David Johnson, by the way? What is he? He's ranked high in all the fantasy leagues, right? He's ranked high. No one wants to take him because he's... What's David Johnson going to be like this season? And then, of course, the A20 game was something special to see on paper. (laughs) And I can't wait to see it on the field, which is Steelers versus Patriots in Foxborough. Monday, Texans versus Saints. Okay, you have the left tackle with the Texans. Deshaun Watson, Bill O'Brien after making some splashes. Will he be able to compete with the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans? And there's actually two Monday Night Football games. They do that on the first week of the season. And that's Broncos and Raiders. And you realistically won't see Antonio Brown. So, I want to know your thoughts on some Week 1 matchups. What are you looking forward to the most? I want to hear your thoughts on Antonio Brown. This situation is whacked. Comment down below. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe. And I will see you next time.